Okay, so this is example five. It's the only example we lack on section three of chapter one. Um, and then we're going to do section four. And I should have about 15 minutes left. And um, I'll let you have that time and work on your worksheet. That's one three and one four. And it will be due next class, Thursday. Whenever I put something in teams and tell you that it's due, I only mark that it's due on A day. So B days have to figure out there's a really due the next day after that. Okay? All right. So this is a work problem. Um, it says it takes you eight minutes to wash a car, and it takes a friend six minutes to wash a car. How long does it take the two of you to wash seven cars if you are working together? So another example of a problem like, like this might be um, how many painters, if it takes a painter this long to paint the garage, how many painters would I need if I wanted to paint the garage in two hours? You see what I'm saying? Um, so. I do it like this, This and y'all listen, a lot of times on problems, I can explain it different ways, but I don't know what it is about a work problem, but this is just about the only way that my brain works with a work problem. So if you need it explained a different way, you'll have to ask a different teacher. That's terrible to say, but I, I just like, I don't know, I can't really think of another way to explain it to you. So, have you ever seen this formula before? Rate times time equals distance? Okay, so this rate is like how fast you work. All right, that's your rate. Times how long you work. And the distance is whatever it is, however many jobs you are completing. Like if you were painting the garage, that would just be one job. So it would be equal to one. But this one is what? Uh, yes. Yeah, seven cars. So instead of them being equal to one, it will be equal to seven. If I were just, how long would it take you to wash one car or wash a car, then that would be equal to one. But they said seven cars. Okay? So first of all, can you figure out what we're looking for? What are they asking me? How long it takes to yeah. do wash cars. How long? So they're asking me how long it takes to do it. So I am looking for my time. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do it me and then my friend, and it will equal the distance is really the complete however many jobs you complete. Okay, so it takes me, I can wash one car in eight minutes. That's my rate. One car in eight minutes. Times, we don't know what the time is. Do you want to call it T or X? X. X? Okay, well then I'll need to change this because I wrote T up there. Okay, so if y'all want to call it X, then that needs to be an X right there. Alright, so I'm going to multiply that by X. So this rate times this time. Plus, I'm working with somebody. Okay? His rate is one car in six minutes times his time. It's the same amount of time as me. We're not stopping until it's all done. And we're both working the whole time. And what am I trying to do? Wash, yeah, wash seven cars. So I'm going to set it equal to seven. If I was painting the house, what would it be equal to? One. Yeah, one. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of rewrite this equation. Okay. I'm going to um, put that over a one. And I'm going to multiply top times top and bottom times bottom. So I'm going to really write this as x over 8. That's the same thing as 1 8 times x. Plus, what does this one become? X over 6. Yeah, x over 6 is equal to 7. Now, this doesn't look like a very difficult problem, does it? All right, except that if it didn't have fractions, I'd be like, oh, this is so easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these fractions. The way you get rid of a fraction is you kind of multiply by its denominator, right? But this one has two denominators, and they're different, so I'm going to find the least common multiple between them, all right? 
Do y'all remember finding least common multiples when you were in like sixth grade and stuff? You had to buy, it was a common denominator, people. If I said, what's a common denominator between eight and six, then you would say that number. If it, it's called the least common multiple. Here's the way you find it. You always start at the biggest number, and you list his multiples until you find one that six divides into, okay? So eight times one is eight. Does six go into eight? Yes. No. So that's not right. It has to go in there evenly. That's what we say, okay? That means no remainder. But we say evenly. Um, 8 times 2 is 16. Does 6 go into 16 evenly? No. 8 times 3 is 24. Does 6 go into 24 evenly? Okay, so that's my least common multiple. It's my smallest common multiple. So what I'm going to do, is this legal? Can I multiply everybody in this equation by one number? Yeah. As long as what you do to one side, you do to the other side, it's all legal, right? So I'm going to multiply both sides by 24. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you something on your calculator. Because what did I say about y'all's calculator skills? They are bad. Yeah, they're stinky. Okay? They're not very good. You don't know. Y'all listen to me. This is so good. This calculator is so cool. He can do so many different things. Did you know that he will find the least common multiple? Yeah, you will, okay? Now, there's probably a lot of different ways that you could do it. You could probably press the math button and then go over there to the right to numbers and go down and find it, but um, I can't ever remember all that stuff, so let me quit. Um, so I, I like this one down here. Do you see that word, catalog? That is everything that this calculator will do, and it's in alphabetical order. So it's easy for me to find stuff, okay? So obviously it's blue, so I'm gonna press the blue button to get it. So I'm gonna go second and zero, which is second in catalog. And then it's in alphabetical order. Now, do you see this little A right here? That means he's in the alpha mode. So I could press the down arrow a hundred times to get to the L's for LCM, least common multiple. Okay, but he's in the alpha mode, so I'm just going to find the L on the calculator, see that green L, and I'm going to press that, and he's going to take me down to the L. Okay, and then I'll have to press the button a hundred times. So I do want to go down to the least common multiple, so I'm going to arrow down here. I'm going to choose that, and he says, what do you want to find the least common multiple of? I'm like, oh, we did eight and six, so here's the way you have to enter it. Eight, did we do eight and six in that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you have to put a comma between them. See, there's a seven, and right above the seven is a comma. So comma, six. You can close the parentheses if you want to be proper. If you don't, you don't have to. There's my 24. Pretty cool. Okay, now here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that 99% of you won't remember that because you didn't practice it. Do you agree? Okay, do you understand why I keep saying, bring a, bring a Ziploc bag, people. Okay, bring a Ziploc bag. Write your name on it. Yeah, I'll get your calculator. Okay, write your name on it, and then we will. Uh, then we will. Um, you can use it if you have your own calculator. Then um, pull it out and use it, people. Um, it's just the germ factor we're trying to address. Okay. Do y'all remember that? How many times does A go into 24? Three. What's 3 times X? Three. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Can you do that at one time? Mm -hmm. How many times does A go into 24? Three. 3 times, and 3 times X is 3X. Uh -huh. See if you can do this one. 
you are distributing, guys, multiplying everything by 24. Okay, you see how to do it? How many times does 6 go into 24? Four. What's 4 times X? Equals. Now watch this, watch this. Now look, here's what we don't want to do. We don't want to have to pull out a calculator for everything. Because you lose something in having to use that calculator all the time. So some things, just learn how to do them. All right, watch what I'm going to do. What is 7 times 4? 28. 28? Carry your 2. What's 7 times 2? 14 and 2 make... See, that wasn't bad. Now, does this look like an Algebra 1 problem? Yeah. People, what's 3x and 4x? 7x. Equals 168. What am I going to do? Divide. Divide by 7. Now watch, watch. Okay? Watch what I'm going to do. How many times does 7 go into 16? 2. 2 times. So that's 14, right? So you got 2 left over. How many times does 7 go into 28? What? <laughs> 28. You had two left over. You had to carry it. Okay? So, 24. Now, listen to me. When I'm doing my homework and stuff, this is what I'm doing. When I got a task, what am I doing? Calculator. I'm popping that stuff in a calculator. I ain't got time to mess with all that. Okay? So, practice your skills when you're doing your homework. Because then when I get through, um, I can say, hey, Ace, did you get 24 on number five? And you'll be like, yeah, I sure did. No, I got 21. <laughs> no. Um, so, you see what I'm saying? Practice it on your homework, but on your test, use your calculators. Anybody got a question about a work problem? Oh, yeah. So, wouldn't it, I just thought of this. So, if it takes eight minutes for us to wash the car and it takes for our friend, can't we just take the remaining two and multiply that by seven? I didn't, I no. couldn't, I couldn't no, understand what you Never mind, I'm good. No? Yeah. Not bad. I can't, y'all, it's hard to understand people with masks on. That's why we did <laughs> Yes, we did. And I'll, um, I hope that girl put them back over there. Because I like her face. I need to take a picture of her. Because she took me to her seat. So I told her to put them back. Maybe she didn't. I think she didn't understand. I'll let you get that. All right, so here we go. Um, now we're going to do section 4 of chapter 1. 1. 1.4. This is what they call it, rewrite formulas and equations. Rewrite formulas and equations. Sometimes books will call this literal equations. Um, I'm just going to warn you, this is probably the hardest thing that we do. Um, I'll lose more kids on this stuff than a lot of things. And it's going to start off, and, and you're not going to think it's very hard, but then when you have to do it by yourself, it's just a little bit different than when you're <coughs> reading. Okay, so we're going to start off with some easy problems, all right? And then we'll slowly get to them and make them more difficult. So solve C is equal to 2 pi R. What's that the formula for? circumference of a circle is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. Okay? And we are going to solve for R. And I'm so glad I wrote that because now I need to tell you some news. Alright? So, um, we're, I'm going away from this for just one second because I forgot to tell y'all this. Um, y'all, is pi equal to 3.14? No. No. No, no. no, it is not equal to 3.14. That's an approximation for pi. And so let me show you what some of y'all did. On that problem, on the dimensional analysis worksheet, okay, then you multiplied by 3.14 and you got this number, 584 million, when actually this is the answer. If you said whatever and you use the pi on the calculator, okay, if you use the pi on the, don't use 3.14, Use the pi on the calculator. What if your banker said, oh, I'm just going to round it off? And this is, this is how much money you got back when really 
You should have got this amount. What did you miss out on? $336,234. People, that's a lot of money. Okay? That's a whole lot of money. So stop shorting everything. Okay? Don't do that. So these are my notes to myself. Here's another problem we have. 33 and a third. Did you know that some people said, oh, that's 33.5? What? No, it's not. It is not 33.5. What is it? That's exactly right. And y'all listen to me. If you put 33.3 and that was all you wrote, then you lost two points on the problem because you didn't get the right answer at the bottom. You should have gotten 200 and you got 199.98 or 8, something like that. Okay? So, can I put this number just like this in my calculator? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. I'm going to show you how. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm talking about, about your, your calculator skills being stinky? Okay? So, first of all, you remember that alpha and y equals, alpha and y equals, or some people call it the F1 button because that's really what goes with the green. Um, that's my fraction button. The first one is a numerator over a denominator. Look at the second one. He says units and a numerator and a denominator. Big number and a numerator and a denominator. So I'm going to choose number two. And then I'm going to go 33 and one third. You could have also written it as an improper fraction. Do y'all remember how to do that? You go, what is three times 33? 99. 99 plus one is what? 100 over three. You could have done it this way. This is the way I did it. Okay, but I mean, you could have done it the other way. You, you could have done it this way, you could have done it this way, or you could have done it this way. And put enough threes in there that your calculator is going to make you get the right answer. Okay, if you just put one or two, then no. Because some of y'all got 199, this is what you wrote on your paper. Okay, and that was another problem too. You wrote this on your paper, people. 199.999998. People, what is that? 99999. No, what is that? Uh, it's 200. If you had used this right here, you would have gotten 200. Okay, but you kind of approximated it, and so it, it approximated it. But you should have really looked at 199.9999998 and said, oh, that's 200. Okay? All right. I did that. Okay, so let's go back here. So we're solving this equation, a literal equation. All right? We're solving it for R. Now, one thing, one trick that I've learned in my 900 years of teaching is that sometimes when kids struggle or if you're doing one of these problems and you're like, whoa, I don't know what to do. If you make that letter, that variable, a different color for some reason, you'll get better at it. All right, so I'm gonna make him a little pink R. Okay, and I'm gonna solve for R. What is over there with the R that I need to get rid of? Pi. And? Two. A two and a pi. What did they do with the two and the pi? Uh, they multiplied, so what are you gonna do? Multiply. You're gonna divide. And what you do to one side, what? You do to the other. Over here on the right, they both cancel out, and you're left with an R. Over here on the left, people, you can't do anything. That's one of the reasons kids don't like these, because they want to work it out. And the, sometimes the answer will look worse than the problem does. But this is my answer, and that's as good as it gets. Whatever the day the TPS kid made me do. Okay? All right, you want to try another one? Sure. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm working examples for you. I'm showing you how to work them, and I'm giving you little little um, clues. If you get stuck, what's the first thing you should do? Make your letter a different color, okay? So here's going to be another little trick you can use. P is equal to 2L plus 2W. What's that the formula for? Perimeter. Perimeter of a rectangle. Two times the length plus two times the width. And we're going to solve for W, okay? We're going to solve for W. All right, so 
So sometimes kids get messed up here because they're like going, what? I don't even know what to do. So what would be the first thing I might do? Minus 2L. Yep, I'm going to make my W pink. Okay? Now, I'm let's say that even after I make my W pink, I still don't know what to do. Let me show you another trick. Pretend like everything here is a number except for that one variable. Okay? So I'm going to make this a number. Let's make it a 10 equals. I'm going to make this a number. Let's make it a 21 plus 2w. Now look, people, how would you solve this equation right here? What would be the first thing that you would do? Minus 21. That's exactly right. I would minus 21. So guess what I'm going to do over here? No. 2L. Okay? I'm going to subtract. i got to get rid of this term. you got to get whatever's, whatever term has the W in it, you got to get it by itself. Okay? So i got to get rid of this guy. So I'm going to subtract 2L. Over here on the right, it disappears. On the left, I'm left with P minus 2L is equal to 2, and there's my little W again. Divide by 2. Do what? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Okay? And if you still got lost, you could go back over here and you could go, well, that disappeared. That's negative 11 is equal to 2W. So now I divide by 2. Oh, okay. I divide by 2. So I'm going to go over here. Divide by 2. These 2's cancel out. And W is equal to. All right. What about these 2? Well, it's negative. I don't know. I don't know. Anybody? I think they can. Okay, let me tell you this. Is life fair? No. No. But you know what is fair? Math. Math is fair. Math is always fair. So here's what I'm going to say. If you can't do it to everybody, you better not do it to anybody. I'm going to say it one more time. If you can't take it out of everybody, you don't take it out of anybody. Now do I want to cancel my twos? Yes. No. Did you cancel the two out of a P? Where was the two? There's not one, there? so you can't do it. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you can't take two out of every term up here, you better not take two out. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it has to stay like this. Okay, now some of y'all are going, she's crazy. What in the world? Watch this. What if your answer had looked like this? Would I need to take my two out now? Yes. People, if you don't, I'm counting wrong. Okay? Because I just got finished telling you, and I'll have to say it for five months before some people finally sinks in. If you can't take it out of every term, you don't take it out of anybody. Can I take a two out of two and six and four? Yeah. Then we should do it. That's a one. What does this become? Three. What does this become? So it's all over one, so it's just the top. 3x minus 2y. This is like, I was going to say, it's, it's the value of one, right? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. So everybody okay? Let me ask you a question. What about this? Can I, um, can I separate this top? No. Can I do this? Can I write p over 2 minus 2l over 2? Yes. Yes. Is that the same thing? Yes. Yeah. Now what should I do? Now you can take the two. Yeah, now I can take that two out. And now it's P over two minus L. This is the same thing as this. It's just written in a different way. So we're both right? Uh-huh, they're both right. And some kids will want to do this, all right? But let me make sure you understand one thing. Okay, this is very, very important. I'm going to go over here, chase a little rabbit. All right, so x minus 3 over 4, is that equal to x over 4 minus 3 over 4? Yes. Yeah, well, we just did it right there. Okay, yes, it is. What about this? 7 over x minus 2. Is that equal?
equal to 7 over x minus 7 over 2? No. 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 Okay? So here's the big thing that you need to know. You can never... Separate a what? Denominator. Denominator. Okay? You can never separate a denominator. Can you separate a numerator? Yeah. Yes, it's perfectly legal to separate a numerator. You may not separate a denominator. All right? Very, very important math skill. Okay, very important. All right, let's try the next one. This is 2B. You ready? My equation looks like this. Have you seen that one before? This time you're going to solve for L. I'm going to let you do it by yourself. You got it? What was the first thing you did? Okay. I like that. And then what? And then what? Subtract to the 2W. I like that. So these go away, and I get P minus 2W is equal to 2L. Now what do I do? Divide by 2. These go away, and L is equal to. Can I cancel these two out? No. Very good. Y'all listen to me. Let me tell you what's going to happen. When you're taking a test, are you stressed? Yes. 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 Are you hurried? Yes. Yes. You're stressed and you're hurried. Your blood pressure's up. Your pulse rate is up. You don't have as much oxygen going to your brain as you should because you're all stressed out. Okay? Your brain is going to see these two twos and he's going to scream. Oh, cancel those out. Cancel those out. And you have to say, no, that is not the way you work the problem. She said, if you can't take it out of everybody, you don't take it out of anybody. You write that on the board for it, Doug. No. <laughs> no. You know why? Because I'm not going to college with you to write stuff on the board so you remember for the test. It was worth a shot. Okay? All right. So here we go. Um, this example 2C. We're fixing to encounter another problem. A is equal to one half B times H. Anybody know what that is? Area. For what? A triangle. Very good. Area of a triangle. All right. One half base times height. Now, I'm going to tell you this. This one half base times height, I could write it like this. That's the same thing. Okay, that's the same thing. We are going to solve for H. Okay, we're going to solve for H. So, I'm going to make it a little pink H. All right. Now, what is over there that's like making me all nervous and everything? Yeah, a dang fraction. Now, do you remember what we did earlier to get rid of a fraction? We multiplied by the denominator. But it just so happened in that problem that our denominator was two different numbers, so we found the least common denominator, right? Okay, well, I only have one, so what am I going to multiply by? 
reciprocal? I'm not going to say the reciprocal, and the reason is because if this was three halves, and you multiply by his reciprocal, which is two thirds, you'd create another fraction over here. You see what I'm saying? So what's the only thing you're trying to get rid of? The denominator. Yeah, the two. So that's what you need to multiply by. Okay? If I want to make the two go away, whatever the denominator is, that's what I'm going to multiply by. Now look, multiply by two. What happens? Look, put that two over a one. What happens to these twos right here? They cancel each other out. And you're left with one times b times h, which is just b times h. Okay? But if you multiply the right-hand side by 2, what? you got to multiply the left-hand side by 2. Okay? So what's 2 times a? 2h. Now what do I do? Divide by b. And there's my answer. h is equal to 2a over b. Could we have just turned the fraction into a decimal? No, don't do that. Don't give me decimals unless I give you decimals. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Listen, that's not the best practice. Okay, that's a. That's a. If everything else fails and I'm sinking, then I'll try that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen sometimes. All right. So a is equal to one half base times height. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I came in, I came to take my test, I got this problem, and I'm like, oh, crud, she did a problem just like that in class. Oh, what did she do? I can't remember, I can't remember. She got rid of that one half. Okay, so I'm going to divide by half. Mm -hmm. Is that legal? Oh. I can't do that. You can do it. I can't, no, I can't do whatever I want, but as long as I do to one side just what I do to the other side, then that's legal, okay? Do these halves cancel out? Mm -hmm. B, H, oh, it's going on. Oh, no, people, you get put in jail for stuff like this. No, you cannot have a fraction within a fraction or a decimal within a fraction. That's illegal, okay? So, do this is wrong. It can't be written like this, but watch this. What does this line mean? Divide. And division by fractions is easy as pie. Uh, flip the second and multiply. So all I have to do is flip this guy and multiply. What is 2 over 1 times A? 2A. <laughs> what? We got the same thing we got up there. Okay? So now we'll divide by B. And H is equal to 2A over B. Same thing we got right there. Okay? Now listen to me. I'm telling you, at some point, some of you are going to end up like in a mess like this. So did I just show you how to get out of that mess? Yes. It's a sixth grade skill, people. <laughs> you ought to know it. Okay? All right. Let's do one more. Example 2D.
Could you have divided by half? Yeah, yes, but it was harder. It made it more difficult. Oh, and it would have taken longer. Okay, so this becomes 2a is equal to h times b sub 1 plus b sub 2. All right, anybody have any earthly idea what you want to do next? Oh, I love that. We're going to divide by h. Now, some of y'all were probably thinking, I'm going to distribute the h, right? Okay, I'm going to come back and do it that way over here, and I'll show you. You can do it that way, but it is a little more difficult. So, I'm going to divide by the h. Now, these are gone away. Do I need these parentheses over here anymore? No. So, I'll just write b sub 1 plus b sub 2. And over here, I got 2a over h. Is everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm solving for b sub 2. Who do I need to get rid of? Subtract. Yeah, subtract that little b sub 1. Okay, so now here is a place where an error occurs for a lot of people. All right, so I subtract it over here and it goes away, and then I subtract it over here. Does that b sub 1 go on the top of this fraction? It goes on the outside. Yes, that's right. It does not. Y'all, it doesn't have an h as a denominator, so you can't just all of a sudden make him have one. It looks like this, 2a over h minus b sub 1. And that's my answer. Okay? Be careful and don't just look at it and go, oh, he goes on the top. No, he doesn't. All right. So what would happen if I started here? 2a is equal to h times b sub 1 plus b sub 2. And like some of you said, I distributed that h. Could I still work the problem? Yes. Sure. So 2a is equal to hb1 plus hb2. Okay? Now what do I need to do? Uh, divide by mm -hmm. subtract. Yeah. Always get rid of this term that doesn't have anything to do with this guy, okay? Always get rid of the term that's away from the variable you're solving for. So I'm going to subtract the HB1 from both sides. Oh, sorry. So that goes away. This is 2A minus HB, that's a 1, I accidentally wrote a 2, is equal to HB2. Divide by H. Divide by H. So, is this an acceptable answer? Yes. yes. Can I cancel these H's out? Yes. No. No. Y'all, there is nothing wrong with this answer. It is perfectly fine. It can't be simplified any like that. Now, watch this. Could I separate this numerator? Yes. Yes. Watch what happens when I separate it. 2A over H minus H b1 over h. Now what happens to on? And then you're left with 2a over h minus b sub 1, which is the same thing as that right there. Okay? But y'all, there's nothing wrong with this guy right here. If you multiply through and you did it like that, it's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. All right, anybody got a question? Is everybody okay so far? All right. So now we are going to do, um, we're going to do a problem that's just like some problems on your worksheet. And I have issues with kids on the worksheet, all right? So I'm trying to um, kind of nip it in the bud, as they say. So example three. This is just like the worksheet. problems 46 through 48 okay now first of all before you panic all right 48. yeah I know that's very scary sounding isn't it you're like what in the world um I gotta find my here they are okay so first of all yeah it starts at number 30 okay <laughs> so so you're thinking oh my word how many problems do we have well it doesn't start till 30 because I took this apart it used to all be what I used to do, and then I got out of doing quite so much, but I used to like give you all of your worksheets, and I made you like not procrastinate, you know? Like I would just teach and teach and teach, and then at the end, you turn them all in. 
So if you waited until the last night to do all of them, would you have time? No, people, you would fall asleep at two and not have them done. All right? So um, I, I don't do that quite so much. So anyway, these are the problems that we're working right here. That's 40, 46, 47, and 48. Okay? It's just like these problems right here. So I'm going to show you the problems that we, that, that people, kids do. 9x minus 4y equals 7. We're going to solve that for y. Then find the value of y when x is equal to negative 5. Okay? Now, how many answers is this going to have? Two. Two answers. Okay? You can see on the worksheet what I've done is I said solve the equation for y. y is equal to. That's going to be where your equation goes. Then find the value of y for the given value of x. So then you're going to tell me what y is equal to when x is 2, when x is negative 4. Okay? Over here when x is 3. All right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation. Here's what your worksheet looks like. Just like that. I'm, let me say, make one more thing about your worksheets. Do all your work on your worksheets, okay? Sometimes, you, sometimes you're crowded. Sometimes I didn't leave you enough room, okay? Um, so that's, I guess that's the biggest complaint I get for kids. And Sage, you could have left us some more rooms. Yes, I could have killed a whole other patch of trees for you, but I didn't, all right? So write in the small space. I wrote in the small space. You can see my worksheet. I showed all my work, so you can do it too. Um, I don't want, you have one worksheet, but I have to grade 85 worksheets. I don't want to be looking through 85 pieces of scratch paper trying to find your work and all that mess. I want to look right here and see you did your work, and that's how you got your answer. Okay? So what's the first thing I do? I'm solving for y. Subtract 9x. Subtract 9x. Okay, that's it. Subtract 9x. Now here, this part right here, Y'all, I don't care. You can put it at the front or you can put it at the back. I'm going to say that the majority of you are going to want to put it at the front because you were taught when you solve for y that the x comes first we, because that's the way we do it when we graph. Here we're not graphing, so it doesn't matter, but would y'all like it to go first or last? Yeah. Right. Last? Okay. 7 minus 9x. It doesn't matter. If you want to put it first, put negative 9x plus 7. Now what am I going to do? Solving for y. I divide it by negative 4. Okay, so this is my answer right here, but I do not like this form. I do not like this negative number down here, okay? So I'm going to take this negative number and do what? This negative sign and do what with it? Yeah, I'm going to pull it through that top, and what's it going to do to everybody on the top? change their sign, okay? So now I have y is equal to, hey, somebody got some um, hand sanitizer to be careful with it. It, it, it like affects my, it makes me have an asthma attack. That's why I don't use it all the time, okay? So um, just be careful with it, it's kind of strong. I don't know what it is. Can y'all smell it? So I'm going to take this negative and I'm going to pull it all the way through that top. If it's positive, it's going to make it negative. If it's negative, it's going to make it positive. So what's this 7 going to become? Negative 7. What's this negative 9x going to become? Positive 9x. And now it's going to be over a 4. And y'all, there's nothing wrong with this equation. I like it. That's what I'm writing in my blank. Some kids will separate it. Oh, okay, you can separate it if you want to, but you don't have to. Negative 7 plus 9x divided by 4. What if we leave the negative 4 on the bottom? Is that okay, too? 
I don't like that. I'll probably circle it. And after a while, when you got used to things that I don't like, I'll start counting off points okay. for it. Okay? So what, whenever I say I don't like that, here's generally the reason. Because if you were taking an SAT test, you would never see an answer like this. You might get an answer like this, but they're going to simplify it out till it looks like this. Okay? So I want you to, ne to know that these are the same things. They're just written different ways. Okay? What's the name of that form, like 9x minus 4y equals 7? Because we did that in algebra 1. That's called standard form. Standard form. And yeah. then we had to convert it to something else. To slope intercept. Slope intercept. Mm -hmm. And yep. that's what makes y'all want to put that 9x first, which is fine with me. It doesn't matter. Okay? All right, now what do we have to do? Now we gotta find the value of y when x is negative five. So what am I gonna do? Uh, <coughs> yeah, I'm gonna plug in a negative five for this x right here. So I'm gonna say y is equal to negative seven plus nine times negative five all over four. Okay, um, let's see, negative seven. What's nine times negative five? Negative 45. All over four. And what's negative seven and negative 45? Negative three. Negative what? Negative seven, negative 52. 52? That's what it used to be back in the olden days. Negative 52 over four, okay? What's a negative divided by a positive? A negative. A negative, okay, and how many times does four, watch how I do this, guys, without a calculator. It's a good skill to have, all right? How many times does four go into five? One. One time. With how many left over? One. One. So I'll fill a one right here. How many times does four go into 12? Nine. With any left over? Nine. No. So there's my answer, negative 13. All right, everybody okay? Okay. So this is your worksheet, all right? These are the problems, no, these aren't the problems. These are the problems that I just showed you how to do, okay? See, I said show your work. Didn't leave you tons of room, okay? So you can't write big as a kindergartner, all right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to write like a big kid. Um, you can see, I got a pretty good word problem up here, oh, all right? Um, then look, solve this equation. What, is that hard? No. Here you gotta use a little distributive, Put all your x on one side, plain numbers on the other. Here you got to use distributive and collect. It's getting a little more complicated. Do you see what I'm saying? You're just solving all these equations. Solve the equation. If there is no solution, write no solution. Okay? I'd rather you write this sign. Does anybody know what that means? Yeah. Null set. Yeah. Empty set. No solution. Okay? Just a zero with a long line in it. All right? If the equation is always true, write all real numbers. What? what what's it going to look like if it's always true or if there's no solution? Uh, Does anybody know? I forgot. Imaginary numbers? Huh? Imaginary numbers? No. Okay, look at this first problem right here. All right? What is 2 times 2x? Two what's going to happen to these 4x's? Yeah, they're going to cancel each other out. And what's 2 times 3? Six. 6. 6? You're going to have 6 equals 3. What? Does 6 equal 3? No. That's false. So what's my answer? No solution. What if I got 6 equals 6? All real numbers. All real numbers. Very good. Isn't there a symbol for all real numbers? Huh? Isn't there a symbol for all real numbers? Um, we're going to learn how, in section like 6, we learn how to write it in proper set and interval notation. Is it like okay? an A with an R? It is a, it's a double barred R means real numbers. Okay? All right. So, here we go. Now, we're going to do the last problem. Here's the, I'm going to do one. I'm going to do one. I'm going to do an easy one. Huh. And then I'm going to give you one that's a little more difficult. And then we're going to be finished and you can work on your homework. Okay? So, there is a problem like this. This is probably the hardest one out of this section. So, what's, I want you to first look at the problem and then tell me what's, what's different about it. Why is this one so difficult? What's making this one hard? Solve 2y plus xy equals 6 
four black. And there's two y's in the equation. Guys, listen to me. You can't solve for two y's. You can only solve for when there's one y. So we're going to have to figure out how to do this so that I only have one y. Can I collect these two terms? No, no. no they're not like terms. So we're going to have to do some fancy stuff to it. All right, so I'm going to write the rules down right here. Whenever you have a problem and you're solving for a variable and there's more than one, these are the rules that you have to follow, okay? So the first rule says, get what you're solving for get what you're solving for on one side on the same side and everything else on the other side. Everything else On other side. So you minus x y. No. Okay, but what are you solving for? Y. Y. So here's what you want. You want all the terms that have a y to be on one side and every other term to be on the other side. Is this one already that way? Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. If this had a um, plus z right here, then I would need to move that plus z over here and make it a minus z. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so anything, whatever you're solving for, all those terms should be on the left or the right, whichever side, it doesn't matter. And everything else should be on the other side. Okay, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to factor it out. Factor it out. And I'm going to show you what that means because remember what I said. You can't solve for two y's. You can only have one of them in order to solve for it. And the third thing is get rid of Get rid of what you don't want. Okay? And you're always going to do this. Check for reducing. Okay? But remember, remember, when you're reducing, you must be taken out of everything. In other words, you can't just take it out of one term. You can't just take that two out of one term. That two has to be taken out of every term. Does everybody get it? Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with this guy. We already said for this number one, all right, that um, all the y's are on the left and every other term is on the right. Okay, so one's good. We don't have to do anything. Um, so what about two? Factor it out. Which of these two terms have in common? One. A y. So I'm going to factor that y out. It's like the distributive property in reverse. Okay? Now, here's what you can do. You can take it out and then you can say, what do I multiply y by to get 2y? Two, two. Okay. What do you multiply y by to get xy? X. Now listen, did I change this problem in any way? If I distribute that y back through those parentheses, do I get this stuff right here? Yes. Okay. When you take the y out, isn't that all you're left with is 2 plus x? Mm -hmm. All right. So equals 6. So I did that second part. Now this one says, get rid of what I don't want. What if, look. How many y's do I have over here? One. One. What do you not want over here? What do we need to get rid of? So, two plus x. Cancel. And there's my answer. Oh, can I reduce the two and the six? Why not? Because you can't do it to the x. Do you all see what your brain does to you all the time? Your brain goes, oh, you should reduce the two and the six. No, stop. 6 over 2 plus x. That's my answer. Okay, so now we're going to play a game. All right, here's the game. It is, 
um, example 4B. This is going to be a problem that is very similar to one on your test. Is it going to be the exact same problem as your test? No, it's not. Okay? Because I'm not interested in can you memorize stuff. I want you to know can you think. All right, so here we go. You ready? 2 plus AB equals 3C minus 5A. What do you think we're going to solve for? Okay. Yeah, that's the one that there's two of them. A. Okay, so I'll let you do it. I'll give you two minutes. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get what I'm solving for all on the same side and put everything else on the other side. So anything with an A, I'm going to put mine on the left because this guy's negative over here. So when I bring him over here, he'll be positive, right? Okay, so and I'd like for them to be that way. Would it be wrong to do it the other way? Just might be a little more involved with all the negative. Okay, so I'm going to add 5A to both sides. All right, this right here is going to be AB plus 5A. I'm going to get rid of this. I want him to be over there, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, so this goes away, and this goes away. So I got 3C minus 2. All right, did everybody get that part right there? Okay, so now I'm going to have to factor it out. Whatever, I can only solve for 1A, okay? So I got 2 here, and you can't collect their like terms. So I'm going to take him out. And when you take that A out, when you factor him out, what are you left with? B plus 5. B plus 5. And then, look, you can always check right here and see if you're right. What's A times B? A. What's A times 5? So I'm right. I, I just wrote it a different way. It's equal to 3C minus 2. And now what am I going to do? You're going to divide B plus 5. Yeah, get rid of what you want. Don't want. I don't want those. Y'all listen, my son Tanner, he took, when he took the test, he did this and then didn't know what to do. <laughs> and I'm like, what, Tan, you did the hardest part and then all you had to do was this. And he goes, dang, okay? So the easiest thing, get rid of what you don't want. Divide it all out. A is equal to 3C minus 2 over B plus 5. And 
that money. All right, anybody got a question? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pass out your worksheets, and you can have 15 minutes to work on them. Everybody needs to be working on them, okay? They're due next class. So, um, I'm going to